I'm Cheryl Vrumet, and today I'm going to give you a look at behind the scenes at this knitting life. Here we go. This is Tilly. Meet Tilly. Tilly, Tilly is my helper. She's the one that helps me frame up before I even start the programming and also she helps me to white balance. The interior light is yellow and exterior light is blue and so you have to balance it on um, a piece of white paper. You, in less sophisticated cameras you don't. Oh, I better, I'm going to turn my LCD around too so I can see that. You'll see that in just a second. So, when I first start the program, um, I start here. I'm, when you see me looking over in this direction, I'm looking at a small television that's actually my monitor. And so I'm looking, okay, are, is, there any, is there any spinach in my teeth? Um, <laughs> is my hair combed? Forever was thy name Vanity Cheryl. Okay, and then I start talking to you. Hi. I'm Cheryl Brunette, and today I'm going to take you behind the scenes into my studio where you'll see how I make these videos. Usually I take maybe three or four takes of that, and then I do the, the outro. And then I, then I have to do the other stuff later. Whoops, I just knocked Tilly over. Um, but today what I've done is, is I've put, this is my monopod, um, and I've put my little flip camera on the monopod and here we go okay I'm recording from this end and from this end so this is what I'm looking at when I'm looking at you and talking <laughs> kind of messy behind there isn't it there's my mirror to make sure that again I don't have stuff in my teeth here's my monitor which will be hard for you to see yeah see when you have um, see how it darkens like that that has to do with the the my video interference here going on with the other video interference. Okay, so let's get closer so that you see what I'm actually looking at. See that red flashing light? That tells me that the camera is actually running. I don't always check for that and sometimes in fact um, I'm talking away and there's no camera. There's the LCD. I have flipped in my direction. Oh, see? Oh, that's cool. I can't quite see what kind of a shot I'm getting, but um, it is kind of cool. Now, I always run with two mics. By the way, this is the second time I've shot this because I forgot to turn my mics on. That top mic is called, these are two professional XLR microphones because the microphones that come resident to almost every camera are just not professional. <laughs> They're just not as good. So this, this little shotgun mic shoots straight at my mouth. It doesn't have a pickup pattern on the sides. It mostly is right out the front. And so it is picking up not only my voice, but the ambient room noise, which I mix with this little lavalier that you see me wearing. I don't know if I'm going to get this. Let's see what this looks like. Can, can you see my lavalier? There it is. I don't want to show my face up this close because it's way too wrinkly. That's why I'm way far back, so I don't look as wrinkly. Um, that lavalier is attached to this wireless box, and that little red guy tells me that the wireless is working, and it's good to about a thousand feet. I could go way the heck out and still do that. This is my trusty GL2 camera. I record in mini DV. Yes, there is a painting behind it. This is my key light. Oh, I forgot to tell you that part. That is the light that picks up my face and enlightens that part. And behind me is my backlight. And if you'll notice, when I sit here, what it's supposed to do is, um, and I'll keep this running. <laughs> this is dueling cameras. Um, the backlight defines my shoulders and hair. It's a little bit hot on my hair because my I keep thinking my hair is blonde, but I think it's actually white. Um, Anyway, that light on my shoulders separates me from the background so that I don't just like get swallowed up. All right, I'm going to go outside and come in so that you can see every, all the stations that are out there. So let's go out the door. You can see that I'm up in the woods. It actually is kind of a lovely setting except, hear that airplane? I am under a flight path here. 
for small airplanes. And you know, small airplanes are ridiculously noisy. I don't know whoever thought that that was a fun thing to do. Okay, there's the studio. Pretty fancy, huh? See all those barrels out front? It was a kombucha lab. <laughs> My landlady had it. So when I arrive, it's usually 60 degrees in here, whether it's winter or summer. Actually colder, unless I keep the heat on in the winter. Um, and when I come inside, the first thing is I hang up my stuff. And this is my little um, bulletin board. Remember my friend Kim who makes the felted hats? This is a picture of her and a newspaper story. She made a hat where she has her knitting ball of yarn on top of her head on dowels. She's very, she's very whimsical and very clever. And this is something that I read every time I do a show. If you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely by Raoul Dahl. Okay. And so I have a lot of little art things in here. There's a little mobile, handmade mobile with dolls and, and parts to it. And when the wind blows, these are all beads and other things. There are other fibers that I go on. These are, that's, that's a little, you know, Chris, no, that's a birthday card from some friends of mine, from some of my favorite toddlers. Um, and one of the first places I come is where I can make tea in my microwave. This is what my brother would lovingly call my paint and spackle station. I do have to wear makeup. I don't wear a lot and I don't, I, I don't like, um, foundation. I never have. And so I should wear it. It would look better, but you know, just back me up from the camera and do the good light. There is my foundation that I'm supposed to wear in my hands all the time, which sometimes I have the tolerance to do it. Sometimes I don't, but I know it looks better when I do it. And my um, director of photography friend tells me that I should do it all the time. So again, this is from what my camera looks like from behind. If I am shooting, if I am back here shooting, notice how high it is. Here, this is my, this is just at my eye level. So the camera shoots down on me. That is very calculated. And also the tripod sits on, there are markings. See that, that is a blue masking tape on the floor. And that identifies where that goes. And also, oh, poor Tilly, she had a spill here. Let me pick her up there. See, there's Tilly from the back. She just has that white paper in front so that she can help me white balance. I'll put her over here. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so this stool is also, its place is identified by markings on the floor. And notice, you didn't, when I was sitting there, you didn't see that there was a stool right in front of me. This is the stool that I use for close-ups because I can get, notice how high that is? I can't even get under the counter with that. It's too short. This is a better height. And when I'm done shooting the long shots, this is the mechanism on which I put it for the close-ups. This is on loan from another friend who is a professional photographer, and he put this together. This is a brilliant mechanism. He used an old um, enlarger, and it pivots in, it can move in four directions. It can move this way. Um, when I mount the camera up there, I can move it so that it goes that way. It can go sideways, it can go down, it can go, it has all kinds of angles. And I use that to hold the camera and um, really focus on my close-ups. People have commented that the close-ups are very good and that's why, because it's above my head. And I'm also, and I don't always check it often enough, but right next to me is that monitor. So I can see that I'm staying inside the frame. Oh, that, see, <laughs> you know what those are? Those are little post-it notes that um, go on props. Well, because when I'm doing close-ups, I often have a whole bunch of props, and, and so the, I have them laid out along the table here, and I have numbers on them. And sometimes they're like spread out just so I can reach them, and so they have to have the numbers on them. That's one of my dearest friends of all time, Dinah, from Dinah's Yarn Shop, who is only in heaven helping me now. This was a doll I got from my mom when I lived in Germany. And it's, you know, it sort of dried out. It was foam and I loved it, but she kept it for a lot of years. 
notice there's that's where the notice the paint job and this window is covered because again we're controlling for outdoor light there's a skylight up above and most of that there's a little bit of spill but most of that is controlled because we want to control the color of the light and so once all of that is done this is more storage there's a lot of fabric more fabric oh i guess i haven't shown you my yarns yet yarns and books most of them, not all of them. Here's a work table. There's a knitting machine set up. And then back in this corner, this is where, after the tapes come out, they come over here, and this is where I do the editing. And that little camera, again, is a Canon. I'm, I have to say that I'm very fond of Canons because I like the optics. And I've been using them for years. Um, and this is my capture camera. I put the tape in that because my big camera has such sensitive heads that if there's any burp, in, any physical kind of burp in that very thin tape, it will not capture. It will cause it to kick out. So I think that's about it. And then I spend another, I, I spend on average 10 to 15 hours per program. That is, um, I spend, well, it was actually last month it was 12.75 hours, but who was keeping track? And that's for a 5 to 20 minute program. So you can see that this is a professional operation. I don't have an amateur camera in a back bedroom to do this. So that's why I need to build a studio, and that's why I need to generate income from this, because it's my business. So the Kickstarter campaign is still going on. There are, as of this recording, by the time this is put up, it'll probably be 10 days left. It's not time for the Hail Mary pass yet, but it almost is. So if you have, this is just like public television or public radio. If you like this programming, step in and support it, please. The difference is that public television and public radio are large enough, I guess I should be shooting this way, right? Are large enough that if you don't support it, they will be able to support themselves because they have this huge base. I don't have such a huge base. Thanks, enjoy your knitting, and I'll see you when I do. Bye. Sometimes, in fact, um, I'm talking away and there's no camera. There's the LCD. I have flipped in my direction. Oh, see? Oh, that's cool.